Hi, and welcome to another Havoc Suns video. What you're looking at here is another officially completely built. Now, I'd like to say that I just threw this together, but I did not. This is actually, all I really did was clean it up. This is one of my uh, portable gamers. I think I built this in 07. Uh, yeah, 2007. And um, it's made with a all aluminum Leon Lee case, so it's very light. And it, so what I did was I used components that were extremely light. Um, I went with um, the 160 gig Raptors, which at the time were, were relatively brand new. And if you notice, they're small footprint, even though they're in this bigger rack, they're a very, they're small drive. Uh, and they're 10,000 RPM hard drives, and there's two of them because they're rated, uh, RAID 0. And then down below it is a 300 gig, uh, 7,200 7, RPM uh, Western Digital. It's just standard hard drive. It's my data drive, my, my, uh, my OS and everything else that was needed is on the rated 160s. Okay, so... A little bit about the motherboard that I chose. I got lucky. One of the customers that I had, uh, I got them kind of on a weird thing. Um, they had a company come in and build them racks and, and they put in a bunch of servers and set up their network and did the whole thing for this company. And the rack fell over. And it exploded. The the they had an HP forty six hundred workstation, which is was a pretty at that time pretty powerful server. And what had happened was it um, it fell over and landed on the power supply end of the case, and it smashed a couple of caps. And if you ever had a if you ever been around with a uh, a, a large cap pops it's like a bomb and and then of course it wouldn't turn on again so then they called me to come and pick it all up and fix it and everything and um i took the server away because it was pretty much toast but i was able to save the board so i put it inside this system and what this is and you got to remember this is back in 07 when you know you were looking at 1066 front side buses four gigs max uh DDR2, um, things like that. This machine was a 8 gig max DDR2, but 800 megahertz. Were most memory back then was 667 megahertz. Um, the front side bus on this machine is a 1333 megahertz, where most were 1066. Uh, also, cool feature about this is this was one of the first quad cores. This has the Intel, um, let's see if I can remember off the top of my head, The in, and I didn't, seriously, I don't do notes. If anyone knows me, they know I don't do notes. It is the Intel Core Duo uh, Extreme 9650, which even today these CPUs run about 50 bucks, which kind of a lot for an older socket 775 CPU. So the CPU is back behind this power supply. This is a Rocketfish 700 watt power supply. I like Rocketfish. I like that they have modular plugs. They, they have clean voltage and they're just, and you can see their gold standards are up here. And they really, just they've been very dependable for me. Uh, the other thing that I did is I went and got an, a Radeon HD4670. Now, this Radeon 40... That's a video card. You can't really see it back here. But I have a picture of it on the box. And there it is. That's kind of what it looks like. You get a, get a good look at that. That's the video card. And if you notice, there... Oops. Oh, my. There's no plug. It gets all its power from the motherboard. And if you look down on the bottom, I don't know if you can see that. Breakthrough efficiency. This was um, very popular in the day because this was a pretty high-end video card that was very um, efficient. And one of the things why I bought it was it was um, 
very lightweight. It has a gig of DDR2. Um, it has 320 stream processing units, uh, 240 times custom filter and high performance uh, filtering, a dual mode AMD Crossfire ready, uh, dynamic power management, PCI Express 2. She's currently running at 16 times. This board can handle it, no problem. That's it, that slot that it's in is a 16 time. So I mean, it, it was a it was a it was a great card for what I wanted. It was lightweight, and that's kind of what I was going after. This was my portable gamer. When I didn't have LAN parties at my house and I went to someone else's house, I didn't want to carry something really big. And the reason why this thing shut off is because I was just doing an update. So this is the inside of her. Like I said, she's running. Uh, Twin 160s rated, 10,000 RPM drives, uh, 300, 720, 720 RPM, um, all of them Western Digital. She's running 8 gigs of 800 megahertz DDR2. She's running the uh, Quad Core Extreme, the um, 9650, which still fetches about 50 bucks today if you wanted to buy one. Uh, there's a lot of fakes coming out of China, though. You got to be careful with that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, they just rebadge them, and uh, they do something weird to them. I don't know. I mean, I should probably get Phil to investigate them because um, he does some great videos on all of that. Now, what I think I may do is I may put this card in it. I'm not sure yet. I like the idea that it's lightweight, and this is a. I mean, this card weighs almost as much. As that as this whole case. This is the Radeon HD 6990. This was modeled after the very famous, at the time, world's fastest GPU, the uh, ATI X1900 XTX. And if you look on the back here, it is, you see these two right there and there? It's twin CPUs. So if you get two of these together and you quad crossfire them, it's like four video cars. So they're pretty they're pretty fast. Even today's standard, they're fairly fast. Okay, here's the front of it. Now I'm doing some cosmetic work because I want it to look nice. Let's see if I can move this back. Hang on one second. Okay, so um Right here, I'm going to put a uh, plate on it, but I'm painting it flat black. And the face plate, I kind of want it to match. So I took it off and I'm painting that as well, just to give it a nice touch. This is, a, like I said, an all aluminum Leon Lee case. I really love this case. Up above here on the top, it carries two right up front there, uh, USB 2 slots. Let's take a look at the back. Okay, I can kick myself for this because I never, when I took the the board out of uh, the smash case i didn't take the face plate so i've never had a face plate for it uh and then, you know i look on ebay every once in a while and they want 15 bucks for a face plate and i'm just like whatever you know i mean what i may do is put some aluminum tape over this and then cut out uh just just to make it look nice uh and then i because i was playing around with the uh this uh radion I have some gaps here now, but I'll finish, put those back on. Uh, it has a gigabit LAN on it. Uh, it's carrying, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six um, USB 2s, and then two more up at the top. So that's eight. Has onboard audio. It has a SATA and I think, yeah, I think that's a SATA 3 and I think that's a Firewire, which is kind of cool. Now, let's go ahead and turn it on and let's take a look at some specs. Okay, so I got a little bit of a different camera angle so that you can see what I'm going to do here and take a look at the uh, boot. It's kind of interesting on an HP uh, server. Let's come on over here. See if I can get it close. 
You know, and that's funny. This is something that I just noticed that it's doing. So this has to do with my monitor. This isn't really a computer problem. I just have to tell it to look at the DVI. And then once I do that, then it comes on. Okay, now these things are things I've just had to live with. Uh, and they're not that big of a deal. And that's just because of the weird plugins that are current and the sensors currently on this board. Uh, you get a front USB. So actually, I think it could do another two more because it's got front and rear plus the others that I showed. So I think it's got a total of 10 USB ports. Uh, front audio is not connected well, because the plug on this motherboard on the Hewlett Packard. Uh, you see the XW4600 workstation is almost impossible to um, try to tap into. So my front audio doesn't work. I never really use it anyway. It wasn't a big deal. Okay, so... Oh, excuse me. It's getting late. It stops right here when there's an error so that you can read it. If <clears throat> And I'll always have this error no matter what. I just had to live with it. But it's not that big of a deal for me. If you're okay with it, you go ahead and press F1. And then what it does is it goes ahead and it boots right into... I think originally this had Windows 2000 on it. But um, because I'm, because of the retro land, they're all going to be uh, running Windows XP. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... I think we'll go to... Uh, CPU-Z so that you can see what we've got up close and personal now let's see if I can get tighter on this for you okay so there you see Intel Core 2 Quad Q 9650, the York Field. Ah, I love it when I'm right. So she, uh, she's a, look at that, core speed. If you go way down here, it's your bounce between 2,000 megahertz. Originally, she was at 3,000 when I first looked to it. It dropped to a, dropped to 2,000. Um, there's a, Front side bus rating 1333. Current bus rating is 333 megahertz. All right. Well, then let's tax it a little bit. Let's do heavy load. Let's see if I can give you more of a picture so that you can see more of what's going on here. Okay. Now let's take a look what our frames per second are. Uh Okay uh, memory is at 31.57 megabytes. CPU usage is 76%. And frames per second is 563. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's up there. You know, it's fairly decent for a machine this age. Take a look at the GPU. See if we can see. Okay, and as I said before, it's the HD 4600. Uh, release date was 08. That's about right, because I bought it the year I built the machine in 07 and I think I bought this card a year later because I wasn't happy with the card that I had previous I don't remember what it was though but I remember I pulled it and put this one in and I was very happy with the performance of this of this card 
she currently is uh, uh, shaders 320 uh, that's fairly nice GPU clock is 750 megahertz and look at that driver date 2011 I was still using it uh, yeah, I, yeah now that I think about it I definitely was still using it in 2011 I don't know if there's anything newer okay so that's pretty much the specs let's take a look at the front end I just wanted to touch on something real quick because we've already seen the front end but this little unit right here, this is an IC dock, and I like this little unit. What it does is it tells me the temperature of three different areas. By flipping this toggle switch, you can see them. Uh, currently, I have it set for the CPU, and the, the thermal coupling is actually in the CPU, the so uh, or the thermal sensor. The, so it, it's reading 84.3. You can see that's pretty good. The second sensor is in the hard drive bay and the third sensor is in the uh video card uh uh fan so basically what you do is you just flick this little toggle switch and then it'll change 77 degrees that's the hard drive bay all the way down is going to give us 73 that's the video card and then I leave it on the CPU because to me that's the more important. You get another Firewire and two USB 2s, which I probably can, can try to connect the motherboard to these here and see if I can get that error, one of those errors to go away. Also in the back, this dock can um, set up a hard drive. Currently there isn't one in it, but um, if I wanted to add another one, I could and this dock holds it really well. So that's pretty much my, I guess, what would you call this? My uh, Leon Lee uh, Hewlett Packard 1336 frontside bus with running my quad core extreme. This is fairly fast machine. This actually was faster than my gamer that I built. That one, but I built this one first. And then I built this one second. I built this one a couple of years later. Hey, like always, thanks for watching. You have a great day and a better life. See ya.